Hey there, it's Pete Checkley from Sample Library Review and today I'm doing a first look at the Gypsy Fiddle from Red Room Audio. The Gypsy Fiddle is the latest addition to the range of travel instruments from Red Room Audio which pride themselves on their authenticity and being recorded on location. Will this feature packed Gypsy Fiddle live up to the reputation of the other instruments in the series? Let's find out. The Gypsy Fiddle downloads at 4.1 gigabytes and was recorded in Sofia, Bulgaria. There are 20 core and extended articulations and 15 traditional ornaments with 650 phrases and effects. There are four performance modes, various rebowing options, and the samples are 24 bit, 44.1 kHz. The Gypsy Fiddle requires the full version of Contact 5.8.1 or later, and it costs $89 with various discounts if you own other instruments in this series. So before I jump in, I strongly recommend everyone to go over to redroomaudio.com and listen to their demos. They sound absolutely outstanding and show off the instrument to their full potential. With that in mind, when you open up the instrument, you will see three NKI files. These are the Gypsy Fiddle Lite, the Gypsy Fiddle Phrases and Effects, and the Gypsy Fiddle. To get a flavour of all the articulations, how it works together, and the overall timbre, I'm going to turn off the mic and play through some of the Gypsy Fiddle Phrases. My first impressions of the overall sound is the violin has that bite and that uh, almost like a aggressive playing style but then on the flip side it has that very lyrical soft warm timbre as well so the sampling is absolutely top notch and the articulations and everything sort of blends really really well together so in the GUI we have our information on the right, so Gypsy Fiddle recorded in Sophia. On the left, we have all of our key switches, and I'll talk about the key switches in more detail shortly. And then we have our settings. On the other page, we have the effects rack, where you can drop in eight different effects. Um, there are a lot of effects to choose from. So let's just go back to the main. 
I'm going to use one of the energetic improvisations to show you the different settings. Now the phrase I've chosen uh, really speaks to me from a uh, music study uh, viewpoint. Eagle-eyed viewers or eagle-eared viewers will totally get what I mean when I play it, but it's this phrase here. So it's quite a long phrase and the performances are absolutely top notch. So the, the players who um, performed the Gypsy Fiddles and were recorded, I just think are brilliant. So we have our volume controls, so you can obviously change the volume up and down. And then the tuning, they're not key switch and I believe they start off centered around C so you can change the pitch. So if I just go, let's go to f four tones higher. And it doesn't have that crazy time stretching feel. If I go really extreme, you can start to hear it. Uh, but still, the, the quality of sample does sound, you know, still quite natural. If I go lower... I personally wouldn't think that's been dropped an octave. So, let's just go... So sometimes when you're pitch shifting or changing within an instrument, it can sound quite unnatural. I think maybe the extremes towards the high, it does sound you know, like it's starting to, to time stretch not too well, but going lower and just generally like sort of mid range, it sounds really, really cool. So that's good. The width, if I just change those, so you can change. So you can change your stereo width, and if you do want to have a mono, whoops, sorry, there we go. If you do want a mono uh, recording, so you can obviously pan it wherever you want to, that's really easily achieved. Then the speed, so you can slow down. And that to me sounds really, really natural still. If we go 30% faster. That's incredibly uh, clean. And for me, I mean, that's in human playing, that's uh, incredible. Uh, but obviously if you need it, there it is. And then you can change the sample start and the sample end, which is a great touch. So I wanna start there. I'll see, just slow it down a bit. So the, the controls are really, really simple to use and very straightforward, but they, they make things like sort of going from mono to stereo, tuning, uh, everything's really, really easy to do. Now the key switches, you can see there are key switch ranges. So the energetic improvisations are on one key switch and there's 25 of those. But if I go to the lyrical ones, you have on the G, there's 25 phrases on that one. Then if you go to the G sharp key switch, there's another 25 within that category. And then on the A key switch, 
there's again another 25. So there are a total of 75 different lyrical improvisation phrases. If I then go to the A sharp all the way up to the C, there's polyphonic improvisation. So again, there's another 75 of those. And then from C sharp to D sharp, which is another three key switches, there are uh, the Romani improvisations. Which are incredibly authentic. Uh, so again, there's another 75 of those. So I've just counted uh, for lyrical improvs, there are 75, polyphonic, there's 75, and Romani, so that's 225. The energetic improvs, there's 25, so that's uh, 250. And then the runs and arpeggios, which are found from the E key switch to the F sharp, there are 75 of these in total. And aside from being exceptionally played, this just makes having a live gypsy fiddle player quite straightforward because these are all live performances. You can chain together whichever improvisation you want, add some runs, add some arpeggios, and you have a live gypsy fiddle player. So for composers who have tight deadlines, these are really, really useful. But if you're not too confident writing string parts or programming string parts or the articulations, these are fantastic value for money. To complement these phrases are various effects as well. So here's some percussive, some chops, fiddler whistles, uh, fiddler shouts, string noise and a good point about the string noise when you're listening to the improvisations you can hear almost like the imperfections of the fiddle so there are bits of string noise some scrapes and it all adds to the authenticity so I think that's a, a great addition and here are some scrapes Okay, so it covers every aspect you possibly could need to humanise the instrument. Moving on and kind of doing things in reverse, I've now opened the main gypsy fiddle instrument. You can see there are so many articulations going on. They go across two different pages and we have our settings uh, towards the lower part of the GUI and then everything is very neatly placed onto the keyboard and colour coded. Now, if I just play as it is. You can see the three sustains on the left, they change the sustain articulation as it were, depending on the velocity I use. So the general sustain is between velocity 26 and 15. If I play incredibly lightly, you have a progressive vibrato effect. And then if I dig into it, excuse if there's any key noise, you have accented. Okay, so even with just velocity on the standard articulation, you can get some really cool sounds. Then you just work through the key switches. So um, if I move up to, where are we? So if I go to the C sharp, we should have trills. And the settings below will then change depending. So I can change the interval if I like to, to make it a major trill or drop this down. So this is where your programming would come in really handy because I can't see a way you can change the uh, interval between major and minor on the fly, but that's easily 
solved within the programming. If I go to Spiccato, okay. Now, one thing I did notice between the let's say the trills and the Spiccato playing at the same velocity, there is quite a large volume difference. Um, but again, you can alter that in programming. So if I move up to Pizzicato. And there's our main articulations. Then it moves over to the next set. So that's a gypsy sustain. The gypsy trill. The tenuto. Then some rhythmical ones. So eighth note repetitions. Sixteen note repetitions, then the same again, but using spiccato, so sixteenth. And again, all of these are on the mod wheel as well. And Bartok Pizzicato. Sounds incredibly natural. Then uh Sforzando. Oh, I skipped a key switch there. Ah, yes. Now, sometimes the same key switch will be split via velocity. So for Sforzando, if I play lightly, okay, uh, then you get that effect. Then if I want to decrescendo, I just play a bit harder. So it does save a lot of time in terms of uh, programming because you can just use velocity and adjust that as you go to create these different effects. Now, one of the really cool things you can do, there are some more articulations, horse, ghost, passion, etc. They're denoted by red keys and these are performance aspects. So you can combine these with the other styles and other key switches and get some cool results. So if I go back to 16th note reps, and I want to add something else to it, so let's say I do... There we go. So you can see, we've got 16th note reps and I've added the flourish. Okay, slide. Now, that in itself is a really cool effect. And when you think about the other ways you have to go about to program that in, that makes it so simple, which is very intuitive. Oh, I've just switched to Bartok by accident. And then some of these, which are denoted by the purple keys, you have to hold down for the effect. So... The horse effect, the ghost effect, and the passion effect. So once you get used to them, you can switch between all these different key switches and create these really, really cool performances. One thing I would find really, really difficult in this current setup is to play live passages in and use all of these key switches. And especially when you're combining key switches, it can get quite confusing. So Red Room Audio, apart from splitting some of these through velocity, have done something really awesome and given us their tact articulation setup within the instrument. So you can set up the articulations you want to use, you can route them to whichever key you want, you can put them on the pedal. And also if the instrument is too big in terms of memory, you can purge 
any articulations you don't want to use and you can see the memory footprint dropping all the time so i'm just going to take some of these out for now and you can see at the top the memory has gone so if i just add these back it just means you don't have to have everything going on at the same time if you don't want to load the light patch and you can just sort of pick and choose what you want it's really really straightforward so they're all back there but for me i might want to you know go from sustain to spiccato without having to jump too many key switches or just keep them on keys that would be a little bit easier for me to use so their tact articulation setup is a great addition and it turns something that could be really complex into something very very straightforward looking at the settings of the instruments using the standard sustain patch we can see we have dynamics controlled by the mod wheel You have the stereo width, so we could go straight to mono. And then you can make it as wide or as narrow as you'd like. The top different timbres, so you can go from a dark sound all the way up to a bright sound. And there are a couple of increments in between, so bright and dark as well. So I'll pop that back to original. Now mode, you can have mono or monophonic. So you can only play one different note at a time. Then you can have a polyphonic. So very useful for double stopping. Smart, so it should go between the two. So that's very, very useful. That's probably the mode I'd use the most. And then DS. Very cool, sounds very ensemble based. Let's just go back. And then you have different Rebo ideas. I say ideas, I, I mean settings. So new Rebo, and Rebo is very, very important when it comes to string instruments because you want it to sound natural as if it is being reboed, not just the samples re-triggering or even re-triggering with a crossfade. So you can hear on this new. That does sound very natural to me. If I go to... the length setting so it's playing the length of the bow and then you can actually hear the bow attack so again it doesn't sound like the samples just re-triggering it's the notes being played again like it would be completely naturally so the rebow options are really really useful now we have um, the fingered style, which I've been using. If I go open. So it's a different timbre. And then the unison. So different playing styles and different timbres. The final instrument of the three is the Gypsy Fiddle Lite. Now it is only 2.06 gigabytes and the only main difference I can see is the further performance articulations like Horse, Ghost and Passion have been split into velocities over one key. That said, we still have all the same different options like fingered, open, unison for the playing styles, the different modes or work 
the different timbres are still the same. So everything seems very, very similar and it sounds the same. It's just a much smaller footprint. So the light version is great for smaller setups or if you're taking this on the road or traveling with it. And it's a really, really cool advantage to have. For the last section of the first look, I'm going to quickly open the effects rack and you can see there are so many different types of effects you can add. So let's add a flanger. It's got a cool effect. And if I put a rotator with it, dramatically changes it. I'm gonna bring the output of that down slightly and let's add one more um, go for a van 51 minus the 50 and you can obviously add untweak these effects as you go so I'm gonna go high gain I'm gonna bring it down just in case you never know distortion effect let's turn these off and just mute them so you get the idea and then you have different rack presets you can save and load anything you'd like to and you can also randomize whatever the effect is up to eight different effects at the same time so that's you know, a, a really good addition. It means you don't have to use third party effects. And like I say, if you are traveling and using a mobile rig, that will save a lot of memory and a lot of uh, hard drive space, I guess. My final thoughts about the Gypsy Fiddle from Red Room Audio is that first of all, the sampling and the timbres are absolutely brilliant. The settings really, really help bring the instrument to life. So you have the different playing styles, the Rebo settings, and you have this really human instrument. Every single nuance has been captured right down from the slides and the scrapes and just the little resonances that a Gypsy Fiddle will have. The articulations are all in one place and they are extended articulations. They really do create this human instrument. My only criticism really for me is I would struggle using so many articulations but I've already addressed the fact that we have the tact articulation set up and you can always go back once you've played it in and add your own key switches or just edit the performance as you go. So I do think it's a, a really great idea to have everything there. I like the fact you can keep the articulations, you can remove them but everything is in one instrument you may only need one instance of this in your composition and it will work really really well now who do i think the gypsy fiddler's for it's for media composers working in tv film video games and first and foremost it is for people who want to save some time on deadlines so you could use it just as a phrase based instrument that would be such a shame though because the playable instrument is so great but if I had to quickly put together some of the fiddle phrases and the runs and have a nice playable performance it's all there for you so I think that side of it is a huge time saver when you dig a bit deeper and are happy to program you can get some outstanding results thank you so much for checking out our first look of the gypsy fiddle by red room audio as always, feel free to leave a comment below. Tell us what you like about the instrument, how you'd use this in your compositions and your workflow. Check out our other videos on YouTube and also head over to samplelibraryreview.com to see all the latest and greatest in virtual instruments. Take care and have a fabulous day.